Hey guys, happy 2021. I wish you a speedy vaccination because is there really anything else to look forward to these days? This is my outfit for the day. We're going to close off the Pat McGrath ranking series or we're sort of going to close it and we're doing the Sublime palette today. I want to do a orangey green look so I'm going to wear this beautiful olive green dress. It is a knitted dress from Warehouse. It's very long. It has a slit here on one side. It's a very comfortable dress, a uh, very soft sort of material that it's made of. It falls very like... It's not very tight. It has a little bit of a flow to it, so I really like how it uh, fits my figure. It is a relatively simple dress, but I adore the color. Can you see how beautiful this olive green color is? I'm going to pair it with this in terms of my accessories. I'm going to wear the Michelle hoops from Ana Luisa, this tiny ring and the narrow pearl also from Ana Luisa. I'm going to wear my watch which I don't know whether you can see. I've changed into its olive green attire. I have a bunch of um, hand wrist bands which fit on this watch and I like to change them up every now and then. And for perfume I have chosen this one which is from Ailey Saab and I temporarily am blanking out on the actual name of this perfume. But it has a little bit of those bitter almond notes which I'm not super crazy about but I think they're kind of interesting and I do like all the notes that follow the bitter almond. And here is the dress you guys. It's very simple. I love how cozy it is. It has a turtleneck to be a really nice dress for the winter. Like I said, the naughty little slit here. I do wear this dress more with sneakers than with high heels. I'm usually a high heels girl, but not with this dress. This dress just sort of fits in my mind with sneakers a little bit better. So. so guys, the countdown to number one is pretty much over. We have reached number one in my Pat McGrath ranking list, which is the Sublime palette. This is Mothership 2 and I have somewhat of an irrational love for this palette and I consider it to be a bit of an underdog on YouTube. Nobody ever ranks this palette really high. Most people tend to have the Bronze Seduction palette. I've seen many many videos by now of people ranking their Pat McGrath palettes and with very few exceptions most people tend to rank Bronze Seduction at their very top. And trust me, I get it. I understand the appeal of the Bronze Seduction palette. She is truly a crowd pleaser. But to me this palette is such an understated underdog because I think that it is probably one of the most versatile palettes, one of the palettes that you can get the most different looks out of. And I feel the reason people are intimidated by this palette is the green shade. Because it is a very vibrant, very sparkly and an intimidating deep green. But sans the green, this is quite the neutral palette, you guys. Sans the green, this is a very approachable palette. And what I really like about it also is that because of the variety of textures that you get in here, you can do so much and you can play around so much. Um, technically, you're only getting these two mattes, which are pretty deep. However, these three shades are in her more like satiny formula, the one that doesn't have a lot of metallic punch to it on or not unless you really spritz your brush or something of the sorts. So these three can easily be used in your crease as like transition shades. So theoretically you're getting all of these shades to play around with on your lids, in your crease. You can use this shade as a deepening color, as a base color for some of these topper shades. I just think this palette is so incredibly versatile. And of course, as those of you who have been around my channel um, for a longer time know, I have a bit of a weakness for the color for the color green when it comes to eyeshadow. So to me this green just makes this palette stand out even more so than it would have without it. But at the same time, make sure you like the color green because you're going to be stuck with this green forever. Today I want to do a look focused a little bit more on VR Nectar because I've done quite a lot of looks with this palette on my channel. I have a Project 5 Wears, I've done my first impressions, I think I did a tutorial a while back, so I've done actually quite a few things with this palette on my channel. Today I wanted to go for a relatively easy going look that I like to do is more towards the summer, but I feel like it will fit very well now because this shade has a little bit of like this lime green duochrome to it, I don't know whether you can see, which fits very well with my dress, but at the same time when you have the peachy orange side of it, it also comes contrasts really well with the color of my dress and I really love contrasting colors when it comes to pairing my outfits with my makeup. So we're going for contrast today. I'm going to start off with this shade and I'm going to pretty much apply a wash of it all over my lid and blend it into my um, 
crease I'm going to apply this shade and maybe the tiniest bit of the black to deepen my outer corner over top of that I'm going to apply the shade VR Nectar I'm going to pop this gorgeous bronzy gold in my inner corners and probably just put either this one or this one again on my lower lash line it may be a relatively simple look but it really comes together very nicely in the end now um, I also wanted to tell you that I am going to forego story time today because I'm just <laughs> frankly not feeling like it you guys um, I have plenty of stories to tell you and I'm definitely going to save them for another time when I'm feeling a little bit more enthusiastic about life but right now if I'm being honest I am not completely in the zone and I don't really want to go into the details of why because there's really no particular reason I just think I'm a little bit done with lockdowns and not having seen my family in over a year just I'm super fucking dumb. So I'm going to leave it at that. So we're just going to do a little bit of like random chit chatting on the side. I'm using by the way a very fluffy brush because like I said I want just a little bit of a wash of this orange as a base for the VR um, nectar shade. So I've been thinking a little bit how to transition into the new year especially now that we have reached the climax of the Pat McGrath counting series which honestly was the highlight of my um, year on YouTube this year. I really felt like it was something that fit me and fit my channel and it really worked well with what I like to do on YouTube which is you know just use my favorite makeup in front of you guys and talk to you about it. So I've been thinking of which uh, direction to go and something that I've wanted to do for a very long time but I just couldn't figure out a format that might work for me is shop my stash. Because whenever I see people um, do something like shop my stash, they pick products that they're going to use for a relatively prolonged period of time, like a week or two weeks or a month or three months, whatever. And I know myself, I like to rotate between my <laughs> makeup and I'm not going to be able to commit to a Shop My Stash series where I have a bunch of items that I have to use repeatedly over a long period of time. That is just not something that works for me personally. So I was thinking how to approach Shop My Stash and I think I finally figured out a format that will work for me. So I've picked out a very very simple format for my Shop My Stash and essentially we're just going to pick out items from my collection and I'm going to focus on items which I don't reach for very often so obviously I'm not going to be allowed to be picking up my Pat McGrath palettes because I use those on the regular. The whole point is that I dig into the deeper drawers where I have hardly reached into in the past year. Um, so for instance shit like, I don't know, my Too Faced Sweet Peach palette or some of my Sugar Pill palettes, stuff like that is the um, makeup items that I want to feature heavily in that Shop My Stash series. So I'm going to just pick out items that I don't use very often and that's going to count for a variety of categories. However, it is going to exclude base products because when it comes to base products, I don't have a great many different types of foundations. I don't have uh, 50 concealers. I have exactly two concealers. I have only one brow product that I'm using. For the Shop My Stash context, I'm definitely going to focus more on shit like eye products, like eyeshadow palettes, single eyeshadows, um, and by single eyeshadows I don't mean my actual single eyeshadow palette collection, although I might pick out some things here and there. I mean more things like my Colourpop Super Shock shadows, for instance. And then I'm going to also pick out bronzer, blush, highlighter, and I will try to focus on stuff that I don't use very often or I haven't used much in the past years. And I'm going to create looks around them. I'm going to grab just the tiniest bit of the black now to intensify here at like the very outer edge of the eye, keeping it lightweight though. I don't want this to be very dramatic. So we're going to do that probably on the evening before. So I'm going to just have you here in my room in the evening before the next workday because I won't have time to go through this whole picking stuff out of my collection thing on the actual day that I'm filming. I'm just going to be doing it the day before. Grabbing my fluffier brush then on my actual filming day I'm just going to grab into the Shop My Stash um, container and we're going to use all the products that I picked out and I'm going to pick out different products every time so I will try to rotate as much as I can through the makeup that I'm not using on a regular basis and I'm going to do this not more than once or twice a week ideally twice a week but 
realistically it will only be once a week. I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of glitter glue now on my lids because I feel like VR Nectar just looks its best when it's uh, applied over a tacky base. I think this is going to work out really well for me. I think I have enough items in my collection to circulate through to keep us busy for at least another year, but if um, I happen to be faster than that, we can also start rotating back through them and use some of the products multiple times. And I think the whole point of this is for me to decide what I want to do with the items that I'm not sure whether I want to keep. I'm taking VR Nectar now on my finger. So I think this is going to be a really good way for me to decide whether I want to keep a bunch of these older palettes, whether they have any use for me. I don't want to be wasteful because I don't know about you, but whenever I see people decluttering a crap ton of makeup, I, I, I'm genuinely curious who they are decluttering it to. Because I don't have that many people in my life who enjoy the type of makeup that I like to wear. Most people around me like to wear who like to wear makeup tend to gravitate towards more subdued neutral tones and they really don't have time for like a sugar pill quad with super bright colors. So I'd really like to know where people declutter all of these like brighter colored palettes when they want to get rid of them. I'm truly curious. I don't know if a camera can ever do justice to the shade VR Nectar. It is just so unbelievably fucking stunning. I'm going to grab the gold shade now and apply that onto my inner corners. I am taking that gold shade here, hugging around my inner corners using this Sonia G flat definer brush, which I really love for applying inner corner highlight shades because it just hugs the inner corners so, so well. So I'm curious what you guys think about my idea for this uh, Shop My Stash. Would it be something that you're interested in watching on a regular basis like you were the Pat McGrath ranking series? I would love to hear your feedback. I'm taking a little bit of the black and the brown shade just on this brush and taking it in the very outer edge here of the eye just so it's cohesive with my outer corners. And I think now to finish off the look I'm actually going to take this more like taupey brown shade and apply that onto my lower lash line, right here to meet up with the black. I truly enjoyed doing the Pat McGrath ranking series, and on that note, um, I still have three more episodes to go, because I've decided to include the quads, as you guys know, as an, as an addendum to this series. So I'm just going to rank the three quads from three to one, I'm going to feature each of them in a separate episode, although, spoiler, we are going to be combining them quite a bit, because as I mentioned in a video recently, I like to think of these quads as one extended mothership palette. To finish off the look, I'm going to apply this Kiko eyeshadow stick in the number 04, which is a really pretty brown shade here in my inner corners. In my inner corners, in my waterline, I mean. This is the final look, you guys. Unfortunately, I think no camera can truly do justice to the shade VR Nectar. You have to see it in person, you have to see it glow under artificial light. It's just absolutely mesmerizing. On my lips, I'm wearing a combination of the Matte Trans lipstick in the shade Beautiful Creature, which is a beautiful, like, peachy, pinky, leaning nude. And on top of that, I have the Opulous Gloss in the shade Dreamscape, because I feel like the duochrome that has... Um, that's going on through the Lost Gloss really fits very nicely with the duochrome of VR Nectar. Now, don't let any of my minor tone take anything away from this beautiful, gorgeous creation from Pat McGrath because I think Sublime truly is a Sublime palette and I love it with all of my heart. One of my friends recently forwarded me a little video and it was like a news segment from somewhere in the US and they were interviewing this lady who is like an elementary school teacher and they were asking her how exactly she deals with explaining to the kids what COVID is and how um, she advises them to deal with it. So then it was the most funny thing ever. She was like, so here you go, this is how I tell the kids to uh, deal with COVID. And she whipped out a guitar and she was like the most angelic, most calm, most, you know, sweet looking person ever. She whipped out the guitar, she started, you know, uh, playing this very lyric, like the most like cheesy, lyrical, melodic indie 
tune that you can think of. And then she was like going on and on about it. And I was like, is she going to have any lyrics with this or is it just the music? And then at one point, like out of nowhere, she started screaming. And the screaming made me think of that meme with the sheep. At first I started laughing and then I gloomily thought to myself, yeah, well, that about fucking sums it up. So, all in all, I'm just feeling a little bit fatigued. That was probably reflected in this video. I'm very sorry that we're finishing on such a, you know, minor note, even though this was my number one palette in the ranking. I wish things were different, but they are as they are. So, I just wanted to put out this video for you because I was really enthusiastic to finish off the series. C'est vie! That's what life is and is going to also be reflected in our videos. Those of us who are content creators can't help but bring a little bit of our personal life into our videos. That being said, I still want to wish you a fabulous 2021. I really do sincerely hope that we're all going to get vaccinated soon or at least the more vulnerable part of the population so we can like start slowly regrowing our society because we are so behind at this point. I don't even remember what normal life was like. Those of us who have been separated from our families, hopefully we can see them this year because honestly it's quite devastating to think about I haven't hugged my mom in over a year. But I don't want to bum you out, so I'm just going to wrap it over here. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more of my face. I promise not to be such a party pooper next time. Hopefully you enjoyed this look and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!